This was Google in 1999. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at how the Google homepage was built in the 90s. Then we're going to recreate it using modern technology. We're going to use HTML5 and Tailwind CSS. I'll show you how easy it is to build this using Tailwind. If you find this video helpful, like and subscribe. A shameless plug, check out my VS Code course at vscodehero.com. So there's this site called the Wayback Machine and it archives websites throughout time. So you can look at Google, for instance, and see what it looked like back in January of 1999. Let's take a look at the source code for this. It's not very readable in the browser, so I've pasted it into VS Code. Now, this was written using HTML4. HTML5 wasn't released until 2014, and it also doesn't use any CSS. CSS was still very new at the time, only being released in December of 1996. But because CSS wasn't as common yet, you'll notice HTML attributes that you may not have seen before, like this BG color. This is how the background color of the page was defined. A quick disclaimer, don't use any of this stuff from the 90s. Much of it has been deprecated in HTML5. The next tag that we see is the center tag. This is one of those tags that was deprecated and is not part of HTML5. It was used to center elements on the page, so this one is centering the Google image. Next, we have another center tag and then a table. Back then, tables were used for the layout of a website. Please don't use tables to lay out a website today. But I do think that it's important to understand because you may come across code written like this today. I come across legacy applications that use tables for layouts. So don't think that you need to always know the latest and greatest technologies. It's always important to understand how these technologies evolved because you could come across any version at any time. COBOL is a great example. It's from the 60s and it's still used today. So then we have the search form, not much different there. And again, it's using the table to lay everything out. And then we have this font tag with a size of negative one. This is decreasing the font size for this row. And it's another one of those deprecated tags. So by looking at this, we can see the simplicity of just coding one file in HTML. Well, we can still do that today with Tailwind CSS. We're going to rebuild a modern looking Google using Tailwind with just one file, and it's super easy. So this is Tailwind CSS. The proper way to use Tailwind is to use npm or yarn to install it, and then add it to your CSS, and then include it in your build chain. Now this video isn't intended to be an in-depth tutorial on setting up Tailwind. I do have a complete crash course coming very soon that will cover that. But for now, we're just going to use the CDN. So if we go all the way down to the bottom here, we can find the CDN link. Just be aware that this should not be used in a production build. This is just an easy, quick way to use it in a demo. So I've got a basic HTML file here and let's just add that link in. And to give you a quick context, Tailwind is a utility first CSS framework. So it gives you a bunch of utility classes that you can combine to do whatever you want. So for instance, on this body, we can add a class here of text dash gray dash 800 and text dash sm. This will globally set the text color and the font size. Now Tailwind defines colors on a scale. So gray dash 100 would be the lightest gray before white and gray dash 900 is the darkest gray before black. If we go back to the documentation here, it's great. We can search for colors in here and see all of the color variations. So we have black, white, and then all of the variations in between of gray. We have red, orange, yellow, green, teal, blue, indigo, purple, and pink. So these are all of the predefined colors. And if there are any unique colors, maybe branding colors that you want to add, that can easily be done by adding them to your tailwind.config file. The documentation is awesome. You'll definitely have to refer to it when you're just getting started until you get used to all of the classes. For instance, if we look up text-sm, we'll see that that sets the font size to 0.875 rem. Text-base sets it to one rem. And we have all of these other options. Let's go back to VS Code. Let's start with the header. Wait till you see how easy it is to use Flexbox. So we're gonna create a header, and I'm gonna use Emmet. So we're gonna add a class of flex, justify between, and W dash full. So we're creating a flex box with justify between and the width of full. Within that, we're going to create a div with the class of flex 
space dash x dash four and then p dash six within that an anchor of hover colon underline and this anchor it will be the about and we'll do some auto formatting here so on this div we're setting it as flex as well space x refers to the amount of space between each child elements horizontally and then p is our padding so again if we go back to the documentation let's look up padding so we have different options here for padding so p0 is padding 0 1 is 0.25 rem 6 is 1.5 rem so again you're going to need to use the documentation to get used to these spacings to add on hover events in css we use hover colon and then what it is you want to change so we're going to add an underline when we hover over about so we're going to make this go nowhere and then let's duplicate this alt shift down arrow and we'll make this one store so we'll save that let's go ahead and open this in live server all right so again we're going to make this look like the normal google page so let's move this over so here is google and then this is our page so we're starting out here in the top left Let's zoom in a bit on both of these. Let's work on this top right side now. So still within the header, we're gonna add a div here with the class of flex. Within that, we're going to add another div, the class of flex and space x4. And, oops, we need a dot here, dot, and p6. Right, and then within that, we'll add our anchors. So that's an anchor with a hover of underline. And we're gonna make that go nowhere. And this will be our Gmail. Let's Alt Shift down arrow, copy that. We'll change this one to images. Let's save that and go back to browser. Okay, so on the regular Google page, we have this icon here, and then we have an image. So we need to work on those. Also, the font is just a little bit off. So on the Google page, they use Arial. Let's go ahead and set that actually. So this is the only CSS that we're going to add into the HTML here. So we're gonna add a style tag. And then we're just gonna say body. And we're gonna set the font family to Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. Now, if we would have installed Tailwind properly for production, then we would use our Tailwind config file to set the custom font. So we're just gonna do that manually for this demo. And also for the icons, we're going to use Font Awesome. So I'm just going to paste this in here. This is just the CDN link for Font Awesome. These icons won't be exactly the same as Google's, but they're close enough. So after our images, let's add the app icon. So it's going to be an anchor with the class of PL, which is going to be padding left of two. And then that's not going to go anywhere. Within that, we're going to have an I with the class of FAS and FA-TH and text-LG for text large. So it's going to set the font size to a large. Let's save that and go back to our browser. And there we go. We have that icon there. Now let's work on the image. Okay, so the image is gonna go after this container, but within our flex container that's on the right side. We'll have an anchor here with the class of PT, that's padding top four, and padding right of eight. And that's not going to go anywhere. And then within that, we'll have our image with the class of rounded full. That's going to turn it into a circle. The class is going to be our user icon, and for the alt, we'll just say user. All right, let's save that and take, take a look in the browser. All right, that's looking pretty good. I mean, that's very, very close. All right, so now let's look at the main content, which will be this image and the search input and these buttons. So after the header, we'll use a main tag, and we're gonna give this classes of container, padding on the x-axis, which is horizontal, of four, margin on the x-axis of auto, padding on the top of 24, margin on the top of eight, a max width of XL, which is a predefined width of the browser. We're gonna also have it flex and set it up as a flex column. 
with a space on the y-axis vertically of six. All right within that, let's insert our image. So that's going to be image with a class of h24. So that gives it a height of 24 and mx of auto. For the source, I'm just going to copy and paste this URL. For the alt, we'll say Google. Let's save that and check it out in the browser. All right, pretty good. Um, it's a little, a little low. So let's go back into VS Code. Let's just put this on the side, actually. All right, it's a little low, so let's bring it back up. So on the container, we have MX auto, margin auto on the left and right. That's going to center it. Padding top of 24. Maybe we can remove the margin. Let's remove the margin and see. There we go. That looks pretty good. That's very similar. Now let's work on the search input. So it has a rounding on the edges. So after the image, we'll create a div with the class of rounded full. Padding on the y axis of two. Padding on the x axis of four. We'll set it up as flex. We're going to give it a border of two and a border color. So we're going to say border dash gray dash 300. All right, let's save that and see what we have. So now we have this rounded rectangle. It's a little too big, but we'll work on that. So within this div, we're going to create another div with the class of place self center. And then we're going to change the text color to uh, gray 500. We're going to give it a cursor of pointer. Within that, we're going to also set up our icon. So we need a search icon and a microphone icon. So this will be the search icon. We'll add an i tag with a class of FAS, FA dash search, and text dash LG for text large. Let's save that. So now we have our search icon. After that, we'll add our input, and that's going to be within a div. So we're going to add a div of flex px4 and width full. Within that, we'll have our input with a width of full and a border of none. We'll get rid of the default borders. Outline is going to be none, getting rid of that default outline. And we'll set the text back to the base size. All right, let's save that. Now we have an input here. Now after the input, we need that microphone icon. So we'll create another div. This is going to be very similar to our search div, but we'll have a class of place self center text gray 500 cursor pointer. And then within that, we'll have an I tag class of FAS, FA dash microphone, and text large. All right, so now we have the search, we have the microphone. Let's go back to this one. It looks like we need a little bit more padding on this. So if we go back up to the main, we had padding on the x axis of four. Let's double that, let's change that to eight. We'll save it, and there we go. That looks much better. It's not going to be exact, but it looks good. Now notice something on the real Google. When you hover over the input here, we have this nice little shadow that pops up on this main div that is wrapping the search and the input and the microphone. We're going to add a hover event. So we'll say hover and we want to add a shadow dash 2XL. Let's save that. And now when we hover over it, and maybe 2XL is too much. Let's just do XL. That looks pretty good. Go back to the original Google. Maybe large. Maybe medium. Yeah, that looks good. Now you see how even on the real Google, it pops up right away. There's no transition at all. I don't really like that. I'm going to modify that. We're going to add a transition. So it's very easy with Tailwind. All right, so we'll add a transition of all and a duration, which is going to be the delay of 500 milliseconds. 
All right, so we'll save that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's work on the buttons next. So we got this Google search, and then I am feeling lucky. After the last div here, we'll create a div with the classes of MX Auto, Flex, and Space X of 2. Within that, we're going to create an input with the classes of PX4, PY2, Rounded. We're going to give it a background color, so BG, and it's going to be gray 300, and then a cursor pointer. The input type is going to be submit, and we're going to give this a value of Google search. All right, we'll save that. All right, so now we have our Google search button. Another way to add a button, instead of having an input, we could add a button, and we'll give it a class of PX4, PY2, rounded, background, gray, 300. And then let's name this. I'm feeling lucky. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now the colors are a little bit different, but it's not bad. Let's go ahead and add another shadow onto this one when we hover over it. So if we go back up here, we can just grab the same thing, transition all, duration 500, shadow medium, and let's paste it onto both of these buttons. All right, so now as, when we hover over these, we got a little bit of a shadow. All right, the last part to do is this footer. So after the main, we'll add a footer with the classes of flex, justify between, absolute, bottom is going to be zero. So we we'll to make sure that the footer is always at the bottom. We're going to give it a width of full. We'll give it a background of gray 300, and we're going to add leading of 10. That's the line height. And then PX, padding on the X axis of 8. All right, now within the footer, we're going to add a div with space on the X axis of 6. And then within that, we'll have our anchors. Anchor, and then we're going to add our hover of underline. And these are not going to go anywhere. This first one is going to be advertising. Save that. All right, so we have that down there. Notice when we hover over our links, they all have the little underlines. And let's duplicate this two times. Alt Shift Down Arrow. So advertising business and how search works. All right, so then we need to add the privacy terms and settings. So that's going to be exactly the same as this div. So we're just going to copy that, Alt Shift Down Arrow, and it's going to be privacy terms and settings. Save that. Let's maximize this and let's compare the two. They look very similar. So I hope you can see how easy it is to work with Tailwind. It might look like a bunch of classes, but they have worked out all of the CSS for you ahead of time. Again, it's super easy to use the documentation. Just search for what you're looking for and you'll find the classes that you need. Look for my full Tailwind crash course coming very soon. And that's going to be it for this video. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. Thank you.